Hello, hello, welcome back my friends. Um, thank you so much for being here. This is uh, the second official episode of the podcast and we're advancing. I have a YouTube and podcast intro being made, so we've got that going for us. I've ordered a light because you guys on YouTube um, will see that it is very dark here. <laughs> So a light is on its way. Let there be light. Um, and I'm starting to line up interviews. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys that are already here. If you are already listening to this, like you are the OGs. Because I haven't really announced that the podcast has begun. I'm just starting to kind of filter content up there so that um, when I sort of quote unquote launch it or announce it, officially there's just going to be some content there for people to kind of listen to because there's nothing worse when you're like waiting week by week for that one episode to come out like I know I know that sucks so I just wanted to kind of bank up some stuff um and I promised you a part two um on 536 so we're going to be talking about the Justinian plague today uh before that I would like to um make a call out like I have done on TikTok if you are a historian, an art historian, a scientist, a geologist, I don't know, or you're just weirdly obsessed with a particular topic and you are a self-declared expert on the topic, please go to my Instagram, it's at Tani Berlo, um, and flick me a DM. Um, I will be kind of going through a couple of the messages and just trying to pick some interesting people to interview and as long as our time zones match up <laughs> because I'm based in Australia so um, if you're American or Canadian or from the Northern Hemisphere we got to make sure that we can get a time together um, yeah and if we can make it work then I would love to interview you because I there's just so much there's just so much knowledge out there and cool things that I don't know exist we don't know exist but like someone knows knows everything about it and I want to know those things so there we go um, yeah I would love for this podcast to be more interview style than just me talking although um, I can just talk you know uh, but I think it would probably be more interesting and it'll also take my nerves away a little bit because like I mentioned in the last one I'm a little nervous to kind of I don't know it's probably irrational but uh, you know I'm not a historian per se at all um, and it's just a hobby of mine and I am just nervous that I'll you know mislead someone or say something wrong and uh, accidentally give false I don't know anyway if I'm interviewing experts <laughs> It just makes me more comfortable. So that's that's how I foresee the podcast going. Um, yeah, okay. I think that I think that's my homework or housekeeping for the day. Let's get stuck into um, the plague. <laughs> um, so I kind of again um, I would have mentioned in the last episode. I'm sure this kind of all comes from that TikTok that went viral um on 5:36, and it was just a really general overview um and so in the last episode we went through kind of like the weather phenomenons which is sort of a big cataclysmic thing of its own now we're going to talk about the plague of justinian so the plague or the justinian plague was named such because the king um at the time in byzantine or sorry in the Byzantine era um, was named Justin <laughs> that was that's literally it so um, contextually um, we're talking about Constantinople being it's like that was the um, Constantinople was the capital at the time and so we've got Justin sitting on the throne um, and so sorry I just realized that that's going to happen because I don't know how to turn that notification on. Um, anyway, he's the dude. He's the dude. He gets named like, like great. 
Emperor Justinian, like, what's your namesake? Um, the plague gets named after you. Like, kind of sucks for him. But anyway. So, um, he, the king actually contracted the disease too. Um, but he was healed or got over it. Um, probably because, I mean, he was the emperor. So he probably had extremely good access to higher hygiene and like could probably quarantine and had the best medical people around I would argue um so essentially from what we know um from the records that we have the um people that have dug up bones and have done the studies on the dead people um we know obviously the contagion happened in Roman Egypt, the Mediterranean, Northern Europe, the Arabian Peninsula, and then also in China and Kazakhstan um, and s some of the mountain ranges in that region. Um, now, people on the original video were very much commenting about dates they were like what are you talking about the justinian plague was in this year um the plague went on for a while and the plague wasn't just like i mean think about covid the spread started in china it was like months and months and months and months before it got to wherever it went next and we travel via airplanes and like super fast boats and that sort of thing so travel back then was extremely slow. Like you had to either go by land and horse um, or some other animal, I suppose, <laughs> or you had to sail um, and you were sailing by wind power. So uh, people just didn't travel like we travel today, right? So the plague took time to travel around Nonetheless, it was still cataclysmic and a lot of people still got it, which which kind of goes to show like how powerful this strain of bacteria, which I have been schooled on to say, and I really hope I don't get it wrong, <laughs> Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis. I'm so sorry if that's wrong. Like I had so many um, chemists or whatever in the comment section like spelling out the... the um, what is it? The Yeah, how to say the word, but sorry. Uh, so yeah, it goes to show how powerful this like bacterium is um, because it not only caused this plague, but it was the same, um, the same bacterium that caused the black plague, um, well, the black death, sorry, uh, the bubonic and pneumonic and all those plagues later on however they were like different strains i learned that from posting that original video because i incorrectly assumed they were different bacterias but that's not necessarily the case they are very much different strains but the same bacteria and that was due to my lack of understanding <laughs> Of how bacteria works uh, I was kind of like okay yeah there's like one one guy over here and then another guy over here but it's like not really the case anyway that's probably irrelevant it's not irrelevant it's very relevant but you guys are probably like just get to the point so I'm, I'll move on <sighs> um, anyway so we first re we first get reports from the Byzantine history um, that the epidemic starts at this one port near Egypt. Um, so that's like our first understanding that the plague is going down. Okay. Um, the plague then, uh, moves obviously. Um, and we have like, we have a bunch of different records. So we have the Byzantine era records, then we have um, church records and historians at the time. And then we have like reflective records from um, 
later dates that like kind of reflect back so kind of like how we would write like a historical paper today on something that happened like in the 1800s in like a similar fashion people did that in the day so that, those are the types of records which I guess are primary if you're living through that time period that's the primary and then there's like secondary and then like today we've got like more primary evidence which would be like the scientific study of like the bones and stuff so anyway according to the contemporary sources and by contemporary i mean like it was going down at the time and a person was writing it right a primary source um it gets to constantinople and um that source in constantinople um thought that it was carried from egypt so there was rats on a boat and the rats got off the boat and that's how it got to constantinople that's what's believed anyway um and the reason for that is um the egyptians imported to um the city heaps of grain like loads of grain that really fed um the people in constantinople and i don't know if you guys have like ever spent time around like areas that are known for grain but i did once and um <laughs> it was a town uh maybe eight hours west from where i live called maury and if you're from maury how's it going um my partner was doing um i think it was like what was he doing out there? I can't remember. He was working out there on the tank. Anyway, we I'd like driven out with some of the other girls or guys that were working out there um, to surprise them. And anyway, I believe at this, I believe they do a lot of like grain out there. And so at this time of year, when I guess it was the harvest of that grain, um, they just get this mice infestation, like i have never seen anything like it and so we were like staying in this house and it was not the nicest place we were poor as broke hence him working out in the middle of nowhere um and like sleeping on these mattresses on the floor and like all through the night we would hear like next door one of the girls that was staying there just like screeching because these mice were literally just running across like I had I had mice touch me in places I don't want to think about. Um, at least they were mice and not rats. Like rats are freaking huge. Sometimes I've seen this one rat in my backyard. It's a water rat and it's bloody massive. Anyway, <laughs> so what I'm trying to get at is like um, mice and rats and stuff. They love grain and when they start like they they're they're everywhere um they don't stop so like i can i'm just sort of picturing that like visual um you know they would just like run over you while you were sleeping and i can imagine that's probably what it was like like if you're sleeping on a straw bed <laughs> of course there's going to be those rats around you that like you know what i mean like of course this happened multiple times in history that's on the rats anyway <laughs> um where am i up to so at its peak let's actually let's talk about um let's read a quote um so uh uh pro, pro, i can never say his freaking name i made the same mistake in the same in the same uh in the first episode procopipus pro, <laughs> i've anyway I'll put it I'll put this I'm gonna I always will leave the citations in the comments anyway um, he quoted uh, in his secret history when pestilence swept through the whole known world and notably the Roman Empire wiping out most of the farming community and of necessity leaving a trail of desolation in its wake Justinian showed no mercy towards the ruined freeholders even then he did not refrain from demanding the annual tax not only the amount at which he assessed each individual but for the amount for which the deceased neighbors were liable can you even like imagine that 
imagine having like the city decimated and then like not only are you expected to pay your tax but you're also expected to pay for like your 25 dead neighbors right <laughs> so there was that issue like i can't even fathom that like what an idiot anyway um as he said a lot of farmers like they could not take care of crops um because you know they're probably sick themselves uh and then grain rise like that obviously causes and as it does with every um plague or epidemic or pandemic there's there's roll-on effects right um so yeah the, the price of grain gets really expensive and you know that doesn't really help with war at the time which was against like the vandals and like the barbarians and all this type of thing so also another interesting thing to consider is the effects it actually did on europe and christianity like will like we pr we would not have christianity in the version that we have it today without constantinople and i i stand by that fact without constantine and we'll talk about constantine in a different like i think it's a whole different issue but without constantinople and that byzantine era and how much changed in that era with christianity and how how i want to say like dark and miss miss in my opinion there was like the love one another and love thy neighbor which is the crux or the core of christianity and then there's what it evolved into so the and like a lot of this era is where those shifts kind of happened um and of course further plagues and further issues like it's a long history right um but you know this was a, a big important point so i think that's interesting to consider like i think i did i say this i think i said this in the first podcast it, it like we don't we often think because a lot of us live in a lot of us in the western world and, and i apologize if um this doesn't apply to you and you're listening and you're like she's not giving voice to us minorities i'm sorry about that that a lot of us in the western world we do forget that a lot of history and people today live in religious states um so it's sometimes hard to like put your shoes in their shoes put your shoes put your feet in their shoes <laughs> um and realize like religion was kind of their state so like it's a big deal right anyway that's just a side note i feel like i feel like i just repeated myself um okay so i'm not gonna go into like the epidemiology because that is not my forte by any means like history isn't even my forte but <laughs> but um i just like history i would love to talk to somebody who like really understands like the genetics and like the dna aspects and like really understands the bacteria um and also like the bacteria species have been found in like china and all of those different places and i would love to know what that kind of means about this plague um what i can talk about is uh the mortality rate so some modern scholars believe that the plague killed up to 5,000 people a day in Constantinople at the peak. Um, like, that is wild. Um, and I don't think, let me um, pull up my notes. Sorry, guys, I kind of like have, like, my notes are very much like my brain. It's kind of scattered all over the place um i need to find where i put the um the side effects notes that i had ah 
funny good just do eh, that's that document where have i put it anyway i think i i i can i'll just do it off memory so basically like there was necrosis that was sort of a part of it um which is when like your your tissues break break themselves down um horrific like horrific um and then yeah there was these bubosses so they were like pus filled they looked to me like boils like that's I, like then obviously not <laughs> they're bubosses but that's the best way that i would explain it and they were like pus filled um and basically the whole body would get completely covered I don't know if you guys have ever had a boil. I personally, with my Polynesian background, suffer from skin conditions. Like, skin conditions is my thing. You know, like some people, yeah, it's just my genetics. It's just what they like. To, my skin likes to do it. And so I have always, as a kid, always suffered from um, sore boils, right? That's really gross, and I'm sorry to be talking about that. <laughs> But now you know. Um, and I'm telling you, like, if you get a bad boil, just one. It is so painful. Like, so painful. Um, I, I have literally been to hospital for a boil. Like, literally. Like, I had to have an operation because I was, well, I was breastfeeding at the time. So it was, like, high stress. And um, it almost gave me blood poisoning from one single infection imagine having that over your whole body i like can't fathom it because the amount of pain that i was in with that one that and like to be frank i am t too much information so just surrender yourself now you're gonna wait know way too much about me and my bodily functions listening to this podcast so i had that one boil it was in my groin or like on my leg like right next to my groin um and it just got so inflamed and infected that i couldn't walk like i couldn't walk just from the pain of that one infection anyway i had to go into hospital um it was they couldn't do anything about it without knocking me out so they put me under anesthetic and i think I think they treated it with priority because I was breastfeeding. Looking back, I, I can't really remember, but I think that's why, because um, I know of other people that have just like, they just don't care and just do it in a, in a chair, which would be awful. But I, I think because I was in so much pain with it and I had left it for days and days and days, just thinking it would go away like per usual, as it always has. Um, and as a kid, I learned like, if you touch them, they get worse like just don't touch them don't get bacteria on them just let them be anyway this one obviously almost caused me blood poisoning um yeah so they knocked me under and i remember waking up and like looking at the area and it was packed at the time so like they packed gauze into where they had taken out the infection and it was like this huge effing hole like it was massive Anyway, the point of me telling you this very disgusting story, by the way, it healed fine and it's not come back, although I still suffer from the same issues. And I don't know why. If some doctor or if there's a dermatologist, I have asked countless dermatologists and they're just like, oh, it's just the bacteria on your skin. And I'm like, can we avoid this? What can we do here? And no one knows. Well, no one thus far. So if you suffer from that and you know what's going down, please let me know. <laughs> um, I've also, like, had, like, allergy tests done and, like, all sorts. I just can't work out why. Anyway, this one freaking boil I had to go into surgery for. That's the modern day. These people were dying of that, covering their body to the point where they would they and that's it with that type of like infection it begins under the skin right and it does its stuff under there and then as it gets more infected and um 
grows, I suppose, it becomes like, this is so disgusting, like poppable, like, bleh, I, like, please don't ever send me that sort of stuff. It creeps me out. But yeah, that's kind of what happens. And so like their whole body was that until like all of them, like, burp. anyway, I think that's enough for everyone. <laughs> Um, I'm going to leave this one here, uh, with that thought in mind so that you can like go away and think about that while you sleep. Um, again, I have a interview lined up for this week. Hopefully I get a few more interviews lined up for soon to come. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited about my first interview. It's with a friend of mine. She's, um, she studied archaeology and anthropology um, we're going to talk about some cool stuff like uh, how humans became to be. Um, yeah. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you for putting up with, again, my low quality of everything at the moment. We'll get there, team. We'll get there. <laughs> Thanks for your support, guys. See ya.